Hello, my name is Chris and I'm going to walk with you throughout the 2023 Montreal Car Show. So this is not really um, a presentation of the car show. Think of it more as I'm walking with you and we're having a conversation and I'm giving you random thoughts. So here's the entrance. It's changed a little bit the car show for 2023. Uh, it's only on one floor now. There were less uh, brands who were there. The absent were Honda, Volkswagen, and the luxury German brands. So that's quite a bit. We start with Buick. Um, Buick is really about the semi-premium segment of the SUV market, uh, of the multi-segment crossover market. And they have cars that are really focused on the core tasks of those vehicles. Um, semi-luxurious, quiet on the inside, um, the dimensions that you'd expect from these types of vehicles, roomy, um, so really the range is um, pretty complete on that level. The GM section, well, GM is one of those brands where I'm, I'm having difficulty loving them. I think where they've done best in the last few years is in their electrification effort. Like the Volt and the Bolt I find are the best vehicles that they've made. And I'm not saying that as, I'm not an environmentalist. Uh, I'm just saying that they're good, right? I tro tried the 2022 Chevrolet Bolt recently. It was wonderful. It was like a Honda Fit. And I think that they they understood, at least on that level, that the core task of the EV, I think, is a second vehicle with a charging station at home. I think that's where it works best. And of course, well, you have the trucks and the sports car. There was even a Camaro I didn't film it. And well, uh, all their sports cars are very nice. I mean, they look like supercars now, Corvettes. And their trucks are, are beautiful. No question, no question. That's the Silverado. I mean, it looks amazing. So lots of trucks. I mean, I've noticed like over the last 10 years, there's like more trucks almost than cars at the car shows. I mean, there's hardly any cars. And the average price of vehicles has gone up. So these are small trucks. I mean, you can't get these like a decently equipped one for under fifty thousand uh, dollars. No, no spray on bed liner, by the way, but a convenient measuring. Uh, like a measuring corner if you want so here's the inside of these vehicles gm's interiors are i think their weakest spot they always look and feel a little cheap but the exteriors are very nice so yeah uh, chevrolet that's the chevrolet display lots of trucks very spaced out very airy allowing people to uh try their vehicles go around them, take step back, take a look at them. Some of them, some of the other displays were more cramped. Toyota probably dominated the car show and no question, uh, just no question. They're just so good. Here's the imaginary vehicle, the RAV4 Prime. I mean, they, they showed at all the car shows except no one can get any. So it's the, the unicorn, right? It's, it's the vehicle everyone wants, but no one can get because it really just doesn't exist in, in reality. So Toyota, a little bit disingenuous for that. The BZ4X is much bigger than you'd think. I mean, it, it goes, I think for $47,000, I think base price, it's pretty big. Uh, compared to, let's say, the Koreans who are a bit smaller at that price. Very futuristic, gimmicky on the inside, I'd say. The Crown, I don't know, the Crown I think is replacing the Avalon, it didn't do it for me, but uh, it's certainly bigger. Um, the, the, the Prius looks great, and I must say the interior looks better, and the hatch has more room. However, when you're sitting in front, that windshield is in your forehead. I mean, it, it's very sloping, and it's very low. I mean, I mean the top of the, 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 the windshield is at eye level, almost. So, it compromises outward visibility. This, this car, the Supra, I love the Supra. I mean, you're going to see it throughout the video I just love this car very nice very nice the the, the GR86 is beautiful beautiful um, they, they, these are probably the only passion cars at this car show I kind of like that there wasn't too much over emphasis on the electric 
because I find that's not what most people buy. Although I recognize it is the future and uh, and the drivetrains are wonderful uh, in a certain sense. Uh, there was, I think, what people want. I think there was a lot of um, e a few economical cars like it was a Corolla Cross, uh, Corolla Cross, Corolla Hatchback, Corollas, Camrys, RAV4s things like that there was a few passion cars but i think mostly the car show did focus i think on what people want very pricey i was walking around and looking at the prices of cars and i couldn't get over how much they went up and in fact i did the mental exercise with my girlfriend we she has a 2017 jetta and she, she and over the rate that she financed i mean that 2017 versus today the base jetta 2017 it was like if we did the financing over the same period, I think the price went up like 12, 13, 000, 12 or thirteen thousand dollars. It was crazy. So cars when financed over long periods with these high interest rates and high prices. I mean, we're not talking about seven or eight percent difference in price. We're talking about a 20, 25 percent difference in price after when you calculate all the payments. 30 percent sometimes. I'm telling you, it's huge. It's huge. So uh, it's a bit of a buzz, buzz kill for the consumer. Even the Sequoia was very nice. I mean, Toyota just has their stuff together. They really do. The Camry's nice. The uh, Everything's nice. Nice display here for the Tundra. They also had Tacomas. Once again, like, trucks are really... I mean, we're living in Montreal. We don't think about trucks, but I mean, a lot of people buy them. Interestingly, they had companies who sell these cars come in here and do the display. So this isn't really like Ferrari. It's a company, like, that sells super vehicles that presented their cars back to the tacoma i just thought wow this this looks good you know really rugged i love passion vehicles they even had like a ferrari f40 on on presentation and it really shows you like the evolution of the supercar really nice i think the f40 is probably the most iconic supercar ever Yeah, Ferrari looks good. See, this is Porsche was not at the car show. However, there there are a company called Poirier who, who was there and they sell what I'm assuming are second secondhand Porsches. This was the Shelby Mustang Club. There was no Ford at the car show, so I guess it's one way to get uh, at least the, the presence of different brands. GMC had a beautiful display. Beautiful display. GM has doubled down on the big truck. Here is a car brand which I ignored the existence of until right there. Uh, I forget what VF stands for, for, but I mean it's an electric company that sells cars for a lot of money. I mean it's all. This is the one hundred thousand dollar club, so I wasn't really interested. Yeah, look at this vehicle. It goes for like fifty eight thousand plus tax. I mean that's like what almost seventy in Canada, in Quebec. It's it's, it's expensive. GM has got to take the person who does their interior design and shoot them in the back of the head. I mean, I think that's what's what's wrong with GM is their their interiors are just they just don't feel premium. I would say, with the exception of their seats, they they just don't feel premium. The exterior is fine, all that stuff is fine, but the interior just has something lacking. Look at these front ends. These these trucks are huge. Now look at, this is the Koreans, the Seoul EV, compare and contrast, this is a small vehicle. Look at, they're displaying the engineering. This is what I'm talking about, this is what I like. I mean, the Koreans have their shit together. And um, I think um, they make compelling vehicles. There's no question, there's no question. Middle class oriented. Uh, low fuel cost. Uh, Electrification. The future. You know what I mean? It's just more efficient. And and of course that they have their their crossovers or they're, they're there and yet they, they have their smaller vehicles. The Kia Forte was there. Here you have a Subaru, which is a brand I, I, I never liked until I started reviewing cars because I just I tried one maybe in 2010. I thought it was a shit box. I mean, but they've gotten so much better since. And I, I really enjoy Subarus now where sometimes like I, I'd, I'd consider the legacy. 
very practical very practical sturdy big windows nice driving positions um, Subaru make cars that are easy to live with every day and their four-wheel drive system is just awesome in the snow I mean you feel it Subaru with their four-wheel drive system eliminates seasonal stress right winter no winter rain no rain I love the little BRZ. I'm gonna buy that car one day. I swear to God, I'm gonna buy that car. It's just so beautiful. It's beautiful. The rear end is beautiful. A true passion car. The Subaru Impreza is, I don't know. I don't, I know a lot of people love Subaru, but I just, they're so ugly. They're so ugly, these cars. Imagine that's a 2024. This, 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 uh, this hatchback from Subaru is not too shabby, I'll tell you. It looks pretty good. Once again, look at this. This is such an ugly duckling. Uh, we I, I saw a lot of fathers uh, with their sons at the car show. I really enjoy seeing that. Uh, people going to the car show with their children, showing them cars, developed, developing a, a, a passion for private transportation. I think that's awesome. A Subaru Legacy, I think, is a great car. I mean, if, if you're thinking functional, it's it's great. This is really a nice rear end, the Kia K5. I, the sales are not very strong, but once again, I went back to Kia because I just find they're a brand that caters to what I think a lot of con where a lot of consumers in Quebec are. I mean, efficient, reasonable, long warranties, peace of mind. I think. That's where a lot of consumers are at. You know, and, and they have the big vehicles too. They have the Tellurides, but they also have the Rios. I, I really, one of the things I judge a car company on is how they do their less expensive vehicles. It really cues me in on how, whether their expensive vehicles will be good. And um, I've never owned a Kia actually yet i have recommended to uh, friends and family and in general they've been very satisfied an ex-girlfriend i recommended she had a kia she bought one she's very happy with her kia so look at look at hyundai right the ionic 6 this is they're pl they're all in ev they're all in and uh, you know one of the companies that's on the engineering front i think along with tesla really fighting for ways to make these things as affordable and desirable as possible. And uh, that's where the future is, right? I think the future is in this type of engineering. There's just no question. I mean, uh, we can all try to turn the heat down. I mean, I've, that's when I hear people talk like that, I hear a bunch of losers. Uh, in turn, like nobody's gonna do that, right? I mean, seriously, we're all gonna go become cold in the winter. I mean. I just get sick of that type of stuff there. I'm, I'm zoned out for that. The Nissan Altima looked very good, I thought. The Z car was very nice. Nissan is slightly bouncing back after years of lethargy, I would say. Nissan is one of those companies that they go up or they go down. And they go up and they go down. The Rogue is unquestionably a Quebec favorite. We had, a, I think they had like this publicity campaign where they're saying they now have an adrenaline laboratory, which is laughable. But nevertheless, they're making an effort in trying to resurrect not only their vehicle, but their image. Their vehicles, I thought, were average for quite some time. So now they are creeping up. Belief gets less credit than it deserves. That's the Versa. The Versa is like the less expensive car in, I think that's sold in Quebec right now. And it's in a very, and it's a very good vehicle. I mean, you get an all equipped Versa for $24,000. I mean, for less than $30,000, you get an all equipped subcompact that will fill all your needs. That won't cost a lot on gas. I mean, the Sonata N line was, I thought, beautiful on the outside and on the inside. Very nice. Very nice. It's funny, I find myself, even though I'm making more money than I ever had in my life, it just it just feels like the, the car prices have crept further and further out of reach. It's a bit funny. 
I took this shot for Pan the Organizer because I'm pretty sure even though he doesn't say it, I think he's going to buy a, a Bugatti. I think that's going to be his next car. That would be awesome. If he, if he bought a Bugatti, that would be like just... <laughs> I just... <can't... laughs> that would be so funny if he bought a Bugatti. <laughs> ah, that would be awesome. That would be crazy. So Cadillac, once again, a nice spaced out uh, display. Cadillac has this brand identity uh, that's, it's kind of hard because they've squandered their brand over the decades, which they had maybe five decades ago. And now they're kind of like in this space where they have to make high quality products, right? If you don't have brand prestige and you're making a luxury product, you'd better be better and less expensive than your German rivals. And uh, so it's, they, they're, they're not offering reliability like Lexus. They're not offering brand prestige like the Germans. So they're really in a tough spot. Whereas Lexus, I mean, I think the RX is the vehicle, I mean, the RX350 is the personification of Lexus. Big, luxurious, reliable, available, and with a hybrid. I think the IS is very nice, but there's just it's just there's no fuel economy, and uh, I just this is basically a, the UX is basically a big hatchback. I mean, it, actually, it's not a, it's a, actually an average sized hatchback that's slightly raised off the ground. But nevertheless, I think Lexus is doing a really good job in terms of like they've really increased the quality of their design over the last decade and it shows. I mean, this car is beautiful. It's over, a little bit over $100,000. It looks great. Back to the supercar se section. I mean, once again, the, this is not a Lamborghini display. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a third party. So there was only one floor and I decided to go back to my favorite spots. I really thought that this was the only passion area. And you can see there's people, there's young people around these vehicles that generated interest. I mean, this is what I mean by Toyota. Like this, this company is hungry, right? They're going after environmentally conscious. They're going after the sports crowd. They're going after the conservative buyer. They're going after everything. They, they win all the awards, right? I mean, the, I mean look, look at their cars. Like they're all, they don't make any weak products. They're reliable. You, you, and also I think that the, the, the Bolt, $41,000, that is the most reliable EV, especially in Quebec when you get that crazy rebate, that over, perhaps almost overzealous rebate. Uh, it's reasonably priced if you can find one. It's, once again, it's not a buyer's market. I mean, I wouldn't recommend buying a car right now for sure. I mean, I, I mean, you, you don't want to go to the dealership and not have the upper hand because when they have the upper hand, they're going to get you. The Corolla Cross, very good, very practical, very convenient. You buy a Corolla Cross, I think it's going to last you 15, 20 years. Uh, if you have a family and you have children growing up, uh, you have a five, six, seven, eight year old, you buy yourself a Cross and when they turn 16, 17, they can become their car. The Venza, excellent vehicle, underreported how good it is. The Venza is a great vehicle. So, I mean, those are my overall impressions of the car show. I, I'm just left with Toyota and the Koreans that are just plowing ahead. Um, Subaru that has an honorable mention. A Nissan kind of coming up. And GM, which awkwardly their finest vehicle that's accessible by most is really the vehicles that they cancel like the volt or the bolt and uh that's kind of like what i think about the car show uh, and what's on offer for regular people of course uh, christopher car reviews is all about regular people and the, the bz4x is incredibly big and really i'm closing this scene with the rav4 because that is the car that quebec loves